Right, now in that previous proof, we used this slightly hazy fact that every number has a prime factor. So let's now prove that. And in fact, I'm going to prove something a bit more, uh, a bit stronger than that, a bit better than that, which is that every number can be written as a product of primes. This is part of the uh, fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which says that every number can be written uniquely as a product of primes. So it's going to be useful or interesting or something for, for us first to see that at least it can be written as a product of primes. And we're going to do this, we're going to do this by strong induction. Okay. Proposition. Every uh, natural number n greater than one be written as a product of primes. Proof is going to be by strong induction. Remember that strong induction is slightly different from ordinary induction. In ordinary induction, you show it's true for the starting case, and then you show that being true for a particular k implies that it's true for k plus 1. For strong induction, you do the starting case, and then you show that being true for everything up to k gives us that it's true for k plus 1. So that's the one we're going to use here. So let's first do the starting case. Now here, the starting case isn't 1, because we're only doing this for numbers bigger than 1. So the starting case is 2. So the starting case... is n equals 2, well that already is prime, so it's already written as a product of primes, is already a product of primes, as 2 is prime. It's a slightly silly product, it's a kind of, it's a trivial product, because it's a product of just one prime number, but that's okay. So now let's assume that it's true for all um, for all numbers less than less than k, say, and show that this means it's definitely true for k. Let me show it's true for k. Well, first, there are two cases. Either k is prime, in which case we're done, or k isn't prime, in which case it's a product of two numbers that are smaller than it. So, if k is prime, then it is already a product of primes. k isn't prime. If k is not prime, then k must equal a times b, where a and b are neither 1 nor k, where a and b are therefore strictly in between 1 and k. But in that case, we can use our induction hypothesis which says that a and b, because they're between 1 and k, they must, we must be able to write them as a product of primes. So by the induction, by the strong induction hypothesis, a and b can be written as products of primes. But if A is a product of primes and B is a product of primes and K is A times B, then K is a product of all those primes. So K 
is a product of all those times. That's slightly informally put, but I'll leave it for now and write a little box and declare it to be done. The thing that I want to draw attention to in this proof is the reason that we needed the strong induction. It's a good example of somewhere where we really needed to assume it was true for all the numbers less than k. You see, if we'd only assumed it was true for k minus 1 and tried to get k from there, it wouldn't have worked, right? Because we don't know, we, if k is a product of a and b, these numbers aren't actually k minus 1, right? There's some numbers between 1 and k, but we don't know what they are. So for our induction hypothesis, we really had to assume it was true for all the numbers up to k in order to get k out of it. So I should finish by saying, therefore, by strong induction, true for all n greater than 1. Now, there's a slightly interesting there's an interesting alternative proof to this. Remember that we saw before that the principle of induction is equivalent to the well-ordering axiom, which says that every non-empty set of natural numbers has a least element. And there's an alternative way of formulating this proof, which uses that instead. And it's quite nice. So I'll just leave you for a second to think about whether you can do that or not. Were you able to do it? Let's have a go. So we're going to still try and prove the same thing, but we're going to reformulate it a bit in a way that I think is quite nice. So instead of doing it by induction, we're going to do it by contradiction. So we're going to say, suppose this isn't true. So that means that basically we're going to consider the set of all the natural numbers that can't be written as a product of primes. And because this isn't true, we know that that set is non-empty, and by the well-ordering principle, it has a least element. So uh, suppose there exists some n, there exists a number that cannot be written as a product of primes, So let's take the smallest one. Let x be the smallest one, which exists by the well ordering principle. I should write that out properly. Well ordering. OK. So x is the smallest natural number that can't be written as a product of primes. So in particular, if it can't be written as a product of primes, it isn't prime. Um, in particular, it is not prime. And now the proof will start looking quite a lot like the previous one. So x equals a, b, where a and b are definitely strictly less than x. But x is the smallest number that fails. So a and b do not fail. Therefore, a and b can be written, can be written as a product of primes. Because x is the smallest one that can't. a and b are smaller, so they can. Uh, therefore, x is the product of all of those primes. Now, this is a contradiction. We've assumed that there exists a number that can't be written as a product of primes. We said, let x be the smallest one that can't be written as a product of primes. And then we prove that x can be written as a product of prime. So that's a really bad contradiction. It's a really terrible contradiction. 
So therefore, our original assumption must be untrue. Therefore, the result that we want really is true. Let's draw a box because we're done. And that's another proof that's basically the same thing, worded slightly differently. And, and well, it's up to you. you it's good, a good exercise to see whether you think this proof is better or the previous proof is better.